an indoor roller coaster. So many people. What the hell is going on here? What's up everybody and welcome to the last episode of my Japan vlog. It's kind of sad that it's the last episode, but on the other hand I'm happy that I can move on to something else. So I said in the last episode, in this video we'll be covering the last two days of our stay in Japan. And again, as with the last episode, it won't be a very cinematic episode, but it will have some more b-roll than the previous episode had. This episode will start in the Trento Daiba, which is an artificial island in the Tokyo Bay. It is still in Tokyo and has been originally built in 1850 for defensive purposes, but it has been developed in the 1990s to a major residential, commercial and entertainment area. Let's roll the video and as always I'll cut in between to add some clarifications. And also sorry for the horrible audio in the beginning. For future videos I really have to consider other options for audio. This uh, little street looks like it's a place where Japanese take their dogs, and every bar or restaurant on the side is, has a sign that says "dog friendly." You can go in with your dog and spend Sunday morning walking your dog and eating there or whatever. It's pretty cute. So we are basically in an indoor amusement park. First of all, it's very, very colorful, and now that you can do a lot of fun rides. Actually, you have this card here, and with this card you can, it has a QR code and you can charge this QR code with the amount you want to use for the rides or anything you want to do them. They even at VR games, sadly you have to make reservations for that one. This is actually the thing I wanted to do. An indoor roller coaster. This looked awesome. <laughs> Diva. Yep, I kind of like it. Something completely new that I've never seen, but it surprised me positively. In this footage you can see how Japanese walk their dogs. They actually use baby strollers. And there's even a cat there if you can spot it. I'm glad that we managed to catch this beautiful golden hour here in Odaiba. This is Tokyo Bay and with the sunset it's really beautiful.
Survivor, haben wir Survivor. Cool. I'd say it's thumbs up. I really liked it there. Different feeling than the rest of Tokyo. Yeah. It's kind of new and it's worth a visit. Now we are going to Ikebukuro Escape Park. Ikebukuro is the second busiest train station here in Tokyo. Well, I guess in Japan or maybe only in Tokyo anyway. Even on a Sunday evening, it's full of people. So oh, many people! What the hell is going on here? We are now at the Nekorovik Cafe, where we already were three years ago, and my fiance fell in love with a special cat here. We are trying to find it. We don't know if it's still here or not. Well, here. Yeah, Nekorov is really a great, I think one of the best cat cafes. Cats really look relaxed here, they're all sleeping, they have it okay, they're cuddling with each other. Yeah, they look really at ease. So if you visit the cat cafe, visit this one in Ikebukuro. So uh, we found the cat. This is it, but it's sleeping right now. It's sleeping. It looks like a fox when he's when he's awake and he's also got squinty eyes which make him quite cute. <laughs> but right now most of the cats are sleeping, taking it easy, relaxing. They don't seem stressed at all, it's great. So one of the good things about this cafe actually that it doesn't smell in here. And of course in the price you pay per hour. You have uh, free things included from uh, vending machines, coffee, tea, juices, water, whatever you wish. After visiting the cat cafe, we went on to a game arcade store where we spent a few hours. It's not the only time we went there, of course, but this time I recorded the bits to show you that it really looks as it is portrayed in movies. I mean, in the last clip, you even see a guy playing for two players at the same time. <laughs> where our second to last day in Japan ends. The next day we would go on to Harajuku again, but this time we would go to the biggest part of Tokyo, which is right behind the Harajuku station. Welcome to the Meiji Jingu Shrine Park. Meiji Jingu Shrine Park. It's only about 100 years old, this park. Pretty much in the heart of the city. But when you are in here, you feel like you are outside of the city with very big trees, all those birds chirping around. You almost don't hear anything from the city. Really beautiful. I didn't expect this. Cameraman everywhere. Lots of people, so it was a bad, bad day to come here. We didn't stay long, there's way too many people, way too much going on. So as you've seen, there's a shrine in the center of the park, but because it was full of people because of some event, some important wedding or something like that, we moved on pretty fast because it was way too crowded and way too loud. And after this, we went to the most special part of Tokyo. I think for most people who've grown up with Japanese game and manga or anime, this is a wonderful district of Tokyo. Of course, I'm talking about the district called Akihabara. Akihabara, here we come. It's Evelyn's favorite part of the city. No way, that's mine, not hers. <laughs> this is 
where you can get all the nerdy stuff your heart desires. Isn't it right? Yes, it is. Well, we first have to find the actual street. Because we usually come with the JR line, this time we came with the metro, we are a bit lost right now. Now we are entering the actual original Akihabara, like, that's where everything started. It's just a bunch of small second-hand stores. So many awesome PC hardware stores here in Akihabara. I really didn't know that. I thought that Japanese people play more console than PC. Which uh, gaming chair should I buy? I think they are all pretty much the same. Strange, I thought Japanese aren't intensive PC gamers, but here you have everything for the PC. You need different brands of mouse and keyboards and I think they also have graphic cards and CPUs that's really hard to find so it's that nowadays. Now we are now with the gaming floor of the big camera store in Akibar. Check out this wall. from Akiba and I also think for my Japan travel stories. Tomorrow we'll be going back. <laughs> Makes me really really sad. But life has to go on, right? It cannot be in a dream forever. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my videos. So this is where my Japan series ends. We still went on to Kabukicho that evening, which is the famous entertainment and also red light district of Shinjuku in Tokyo. It is actually beautiful to see because of all the lights and it also has a completely different flair than the rest of Tokyo. But sadly we didn't film anything that evening, we didn't take our equipment with us, so there's nothing to show. So I still don't know what I'll be doing for next video. I will certainly make a Highlights of Japan video in the future, but I'm still not sure if it will be next week or a few weeks later. If you enjoyed the video or the series, don't forget to hit like or also comment down below. Let me know what experiences you have with Japan or also what you would like to see if you go there sometime in the future. So as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Far into the flight back home, I'm already missing Japan. I'm really, really disappointed by the space entertainment system. The quality is so bad that they don't have any new movies to watch. So, that, well, they actually have new movies, but I've watched them already. Japan was great, and I really want to go back again.